Hey family, boom, 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 boom. welcome back to another extraordinary episode. Oh, my darling, today we have the renowned Stefina Zwane Kroonewald, a renowned figure in the South African entertainment industry, is a multifaceted professional with roles as a company director, a writer, and a filmmaker. Armed with a Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism from the University of Johannesburg, she possesses a wealth of experience boasting 18 years in the television industry. Over the course of her career, Stefina has worn several hats, including those of a TV producer, director. Her expertise has left an indelible mark on numerous television shows for major South African broadcasters, contributing to the vibrant and dynamic television landscape in this country family one of her most significant achievements is her co-ownership of sorella media alongside salamina musese together they've ventured into filmmaking and they've made a notable impact in this industry in 2016 stefina directed the debut feature film love and quieto showcasing her talent as a filmmaker they've been behind the production of films such as home Wrecker and quite recently love sex and 30 candles and they are all available on netflix without further ado without further ado because trust me the bias is too long honey it's too long okay so if you know, welcome to Perspective with you too. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's, it's an honor. Thank yeah. You. Oh, it's such an honor for me to have you here. And I'll tell you why. Because because um, growing up, you know, like you guys were like the ones that we would like watch, you know, TV, like Stefina, Salamina, Cece, uh, Saifo, um, Carly. Yeah. Oh my God, like Gamandi said, oh, r- r- right? Like it was just like this huge group of like young people mm. who just said, hey, black child. Hey, black child. Hello. This is not too far-fetched, right? Mm. So so for, for me, it's like such a 360 moment for me. It's just like, oh my God, like the people that actually trailblazed for young people in South Africa. Um, and I'm sitting with one of them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think I think all, all all of us when we were doing that, none of us were thinking we were trailblazing. Yeah. I think we were all we were all just trying to to live the dream, you know, of of being a presenter, being in the industry. Yeah. But also just finishing high school. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's all we're right. trying to do. And I don't think we also understood the impact mm. that we were having on the sure. rest of our peers. Yeah. Um, and then we, we find we we would find that out later on. Mm. Um so it's it's it, it it's been it's almost it, it, it's all you we I think that all of us there's a certain level of feeling like we've been plucked out by God and we were chosen by God sure. for that specific mm-hmm. moment in our lives to do what we were doing. Uh, but at no point did we think we were impacting anyone sure. in that way. For us, it was, ah, as long as I'm chilling with these cool kids, yeah. these are my friends, yeah. this is what we do. Did you do your homework? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did it. Well. So sometimes in between yeah. links, we're finishing homework. Sure. So, yeah. It, 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 it for us it wasn't it wasn't such a big thing until after Ooh. We, we you leave and you look back and you're like oh yeah okay is yeah. that how okay wow because also there was no social media back yes right so we lived in this little bubble of school work home. and there was no like direct feedback not always I mean we'd get letters written uh, uh, that would be sent to the production companies but there wasn't. There wasn't that immediate feedback yeah. that you get now nah. in today's yeah. times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oof. And we're gonna get a little bit, you know, into that. I just wanna tr- uh track it back a little bit. You were born in Soweto, no? Mm-hmm. Um tell us how was that for you? Like mom, dad, siblings, you know? Um, so I was born in Soweto. 
but I grew up in Jibet Park, um, which is like down the road from Hillbrook. Yeah. And that was an interesting time because we moved to Jibet Park in the late 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. uh, when there was still, we know our South African history with mm-hmm. the back date. And I think at the time when we moved into our building, we were the first black family to move in there. Mm-hmm. And then over time, a lot of the white people who stayed in the building left. Mm. I remember one of the, the the flat we moved into used to have a mom and dad and two kids. Mm. And when they left, we don't know where they left to. Mm. They left my brother and I like a big box of just toys. Mm. And we were like, what? <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> But we obviously didn't understand at that age, because I think we were about four or five okay. things. We didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. We just were happy to have a big box of toys that we otherwise would not have had. Yeah. Right. So um and we grew up in we grew up and then we saw the influx of people coming into Joburg, mm-hmm. uh, especially in the C B D and the changing of 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 the environment. Sure. From what it was and seeing uh, people coming for more opportunities into Joburg, um, and 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 growing up in in that, going into schools that that uh, I think in high school was in the in the city as well, just mm-hmm. on the outskirts, mm-hmm. uh, and trying to find a balance with growing up in what became you know a, 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 a dangerous society mm-hmm. with drugs on every corner. Yeah. Crime, sure. Poverty, yeah. all of that. And then trying to get to school and speak good English mm. to the people. Yeah. While also trying to pursue your dreams, you're trying to be a good student, you're trying mm. to, you end up in this world of TV um, and you're trying to navigate that. And then you still, you, you're a teenager, so you're also trying to figure out yourself, you growing, all the stress and troubles that come with teenagehood, mm. you're still going through all of that. Yeah. And you're still trying to figure out, am I, where am I going as an adult? When, sure. when, when I'm done being a teenager, am I going to university? Am I, what am I doing with my life? Mm. So there's all of that that was happening at that time and just trying to, to figure that out and make sense of it one day at a time. Mm. Well, how was it like moving from Soweto to your birth park? Because now, yeah, like four, five, six, right? You had mentioned. And now that transition between Soweto and this urban place, you know, at the time, how do you navigate that? Because, you know, I know with me, when I was taken to boarding school I was five yeah and I didn't know English I only knew Setswana mm. and now I was in this environment where I couldn't talk to anybody mm. <laughs> mm. it's just like I can't even say I want bread with peanut butter <laughs> do you know I'm just like <laughs> do you know what I'm saying <laughs> and thank god like we had this um Mama Mary, man, um, and sort of like she would help me like communicate mm. with the sisters, with the kids, you know, around. Mm. Um, and then God, like kids, you know, adapt much more quicker. Yeah. So I learned English very, very quickly. But the transition from Matapanstad at the time to Westlof mm. and like <laughs> chalk and cheese. Do you know what I'm saying? How was it like for you? So, my world revolved around my brother and my grandmother and my mom. So I would not. We and we before we landed in Jibet Park, we had moved quite a, a bit. Mm-hmm. I, I have no recollection of it. When my family will will say, I think mm-hmm. we moved from Soweto. At some point, we stayed in Tembisa, and then from Tembisa, we ended up in Jibet Park. Um, so I, I, for me, as long as those people were there, 
my life was perfect. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really feel the move. The time when I did start feeling it, eh, now I'm by myself for the first time, was when I went to, to, when I changed primary school. Okay. So grade one and grade two was at one primary school, mm -hmm. which was uh, specifying, mm -hmm. which is like, it's, I was telling Sal this, we were talking about this a few weeks ago. It was, it, it's attached almost to local prison. Mm -hmm. It was a school that was made for, for the prison warders' mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. to attend school. And so some of the ground staff were prisoners themselves. Yeah. So that was grade one and grade two. And then the new South Africa mm. comes and I get taken to the school um, to go do the aptitude test. Yes. And I went there with, there was a whole big group of cousins, mm -hmm. family, friends, and we all take this test. And I knew I didn't want to go back to my old school because yeah. me and that teacher were just. <laughs> it's not as wide. <laughs> and it, it was shy I yeah. just couldn't. Sure. And I remember telling her at the end of grade two that I'm booy in the next year. Sure. And she was like, We happened. I was like, I don't know about I'm booy. Yeah. Totally sing his call. You go to dude. And then they take me to 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 write this test and then now I have to start then the new year comes and yeah. no one is called. Yeah. And that day, I was one of those kids. I was a good student. I would, I'd be the first to wake up. I'd be the first mm. to get ready. Yeah. And I remember when the schools opened that year, I made everybody late. Mm. Never happened before. That I was just like, I can't. So I was dragging my feet the whole morning. And eventually, my cousins who, who, who were older than, than my brother and I, Eventually, they're like, okay, see, I pull my man, yeah. going to a north to go, go quick digs. And as we hold the door, as we close the door, I hear Ifon Ikad, and I run back. I just didn't want to go to school, so I ran back to go answer the show. Sure. I ran back, I answer, I was that girl. Yeah. It was on a residence. Yeah. Money. Yeah. That is all the English <laughs> I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the Sunday resident. Good morning. And and then it was a white person on the other line. Yeah. I'm like, hi, hi, hello. <laughs> and then I called my aunt. I'm like, Help. I was just like, hey. Because I'm thinking it was one of my uncles, you know, family yeah. or something. But I was just like, hey, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear what this person. Sure. And then I call my aunt, my aunt answers, and it happened to be the the school that had gotten to write the, yeah. the test on. And this teacher had realized that, oh no, she's got space for one more. Yeah. She went through my stuff and I, I qualify. Wow. Can they bring me to school now? Sure. Yo, life-changing moment. La I was like, Nitini? So I'm really not going back to my <laughs> So, gosh. And my other, one of my older cousins had to get up and get, you know, get dressed yeah. and now take me to the school. And for the first time I was by myself. I didn't have the safety of my brother, mm. my younger brother. I didn't have the safety of my two older cousins. Mm -hmm. It was just me. Mm. And I, so I get there and it's loom. And all I know is Zane residence. <laughs> 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 and I, you know, it was a special time those early 90s because a lot of us found ourselves yeah. in situations that very few other kids since then sure. have found themselves because sure. we were the first yeah. in that big a number. Sure. Where we were all in these schools. Yeah. Just like, what is your name? I yes. don't even know what is your name. What is your name? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just like, okay. <laughs> And I had to navigate that world. And I think what also helped is I ended up in schools where, yes, the medium of instruction became English or was English, but there was also so many other kids um, in the majority who were then black mm -hmm. who spoke, this is a little bit closer, where, where then we all found our ways. Just when Mrs. Whitehead walks in, yeah, Mrs. Whitehead is speaking, we all just going, you're like, 
and you're right. looking for that one child yeah. who understands what Mrs. Yeah. Whitehead is saying. <laughs> and you're like, okay, who's going to explain it? I know yeah. we couldn't, I couldn't sure. hear anything. Half of my primary school life, it was just going, I don't know how I passed. <laughs> Honestly. And then obviously you get to an age where now it clears. Yes. Yeah. And you get it. Sure. You know? So the transition, the major transition for me was going into primary school. I think I got there, it was standard one. Mm-hmm. Um, and having to to be taught in a different language, to yeah. having new kids around me, having no family around mm-hmm. and having to go, okay, am I sinking or swimming? Mm-hmm. And I had to swim. Sure. Yeah. Ooh. How did that affect you though? Like how did that affect you like with your cognizant to where like you're like oh my god i'm now feeling alone and probably this will lead to loneliness Uh, but now i have to sort of like kick in that um strong thing that lives within me to say i need to swim my way through i think you when we look back right in our lives you're able to pinpoint um especially qualities about you yeah um now that you've gone through the thing Mm. i I say now um that i'm one of the most stubborn people i know sure and and it's it's i I say it as uh, you know to 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 make all of us understand but it's it if we use good english Mm -hmm. we'd say resilience because that's what a world like that then teaches you. It yeah. teaches you to be resilient, where you're like, okay, I'm here now. Um, how am I going to survive? Then you find ways. You find your people. If I had this, um, my best friend from then, um, where we were just like, we looked alike, and we both were just two little things yeah. there. And we, we became each other's solace, you know. Um, uh, up until we even we left uh, primary school, but we, we were in, between the two of us in our world. It was nice. It was lovely. Never mm-hmm. gone. But the the being in a world where you can't express yourself so well mm-hmm. uh, in terms of language yeah. meant that I also was I became shy yeah. in the school setup. Yeah, I usually say when I leave when I left primary school, I was a very different child to when I got to high school. Mm. Uh, because I, I stayed in the shyness. Mm. I was friends with all the naughty kids. Mm. Um, but I was shy. And I wasn't naughty. But yeah. Like, yeah, and I'm cool with them. Yeah. But I'm, I, 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 have, I don't have the confidence to yeah. do what they're doing. And we call it naughty, but it's, it's a certain yeah. level of confidence. Yeah. Um, and I didn't have that in primary school. Mm. And when I got to high school, again, I was the only girl from my own primary school there was no one else I knew they Oof. oh who had come with me from primary school. yeah and then I had to make another decision do I sink or swim and I was like nah this time we're, we're swimming again but not with the shyness I'm leaving the shyness behind yeah me. and I think I came into myself sure I was like I'm here for five years how will I define these five years when I'm done because then you look and you see the the girls who are in matric and you're like sure so in um, five years it's gonna be me there yeah. when I'm there what do I want to look back and say about my time spent here sure and I was like I want to have a great time I want to make great friends I want to have beautiful memories um in my circle of of family and friends it's not everyone who ends up in the school like mm. I have like this so we're gonna take every opportunity and I did Mm. I did. Um, I wh- whatever opportunity I could get or create, I would. Mm-hmm. And and then that's how I even ended up on on crazy in grade eleven at that same school. Uh, from from the opportunities I'd taken over the years until a teacher was like, "Well, a friend of mine is looking for is holding audition. Mm. I'm going to take a small group of you girls." Mm-hmm. Do you are you in? And we went, and that was another life changing yeah uh, moment for for me. So it it's it's a it's that it's it's 
you, you how it changes you is you 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 have th- there's a point where a decision must be made mm. by you at that moment at that moment yeah and and then you proceed f- and then you commit to the decision i always say whether it's right or wrong i don't know whether it's right or wrong but i must commit so that if it's right i committed and if it's wrong i still committed and i can learn from but you have to commit to the decisions that you make where your life is concerned I want to know where that comes from. When you were staying at Joubert Park, or were you there with your mom um, alone with your brother or were you there with your mom, dad and your brother? Um, when we moved to Joubert Park, it was that extended family situation. My mom, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncle. It was, we were all in a two-bedroom house, my cousin. Okay. It was one big family. Yeah. and It was one big, big, big family. Um and and somebody said we didn't realise we were poor. Yeah. Till you meet the yes. rich kids. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd go back over and be like, why go span badly? But in the sort of yeah. and I was yeah. like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, hey, Monile, yes, but in cheesy, but nine, but yeah, Tina, it cheesy than in. But because there were so many of us in yeah. that situation, you you don't realize until you you're older yeah. or until you find yourself in a in a in a different mm-hmm. uh, vibe, and you're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. some things are not the same as the other thing. Yeah, you know. So I was with my my big family um, when we moved there, mm-hmm. and then slowly over the years, some started moving out back, yeah. back to Soweto. Actually, yeah, almost all of them then moved back to Soweto uh, when they started finding their own way. Yeah. Uh, but my mom had me young, mm-hmm. which is which is also I guess why we were also always in this. Um, extended family set up. Yeah. So it wasn't the nuclear family as yeah. the world describes it. Yeah. Um she had me, I think, when she was about nineteen. Okay. So at five six, she herself was still quite young. Mm. And so still needed my grandmother. Yeah. But I know they my dad I, I remember my dad coming back into the picture because I think they had broken up at some point, but mm. I I distinctly remember my dad coming back into the picture and one of my cousins going this is your dad sure and I was like oh made no difference to me really it didn't because the I didn't know I needed a dad because sure. I had I had uncles I had, yeah I, for me it was okay yeah. I already have my people yeah <laughs> when this is a boy now we'll see we'll see about you um so I never felt I need at that time I never felt I was missing anything because I had a full complete family at least my definition of family yeah did you eventually try to have a relationship with your dad well, yeah he came back and then I think there was a big a few years later they officially got married with my mom uh, and then he moved into Jibet Park, into the same building, just a different, a different flat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, w- w- like I said, my as long as my grandmother was there, mm-hmm. my brother was there, I'm fine. Everyone else, ah, huh? it's good. Mm-hmm. So my grandmother was there. He, he didn't really affect whether he's there, he's not. Um, and I think he had his own flaws. Um, when he started drinking a lot mm. and we'd have to go look for him and and not do all of that mm. as long as my grandmother was there. As long as my grandmother was, was there, I was fine. Sure. So for me, he, he came into, into my life, but it didn't really change anything because the foundation was said before I got to know him mm. and it wasn't said by him mm. so my outlook on 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 family 
wasn't uh, dependent on his presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was, for me, it was like, ah, my friend got my mom. You know, um, he was my mom's person. I had my other people. Sure. Um, oof. Hectic. And I suppose that's where the, um, we just have to keep on moving. That characteristic will then come from. Mm. Where it's like whether you're here or not, mm. we are still going to move, mm. right? Mm. Um, however, I do want to ask, did you ever have conversations with your dad to say, hey, uh, dad, mm. um, there are certain things that I'd really want to know about you. Like, can I just at least to get to know you better as, as my father? Um, look, we stayed in the same house, uh, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, we slept in the same house. Sure. <laughs> Because I still spend most of my time in at my grandmother's flat and would come to 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 their flat to sleep. Um, and there were times when we would he in terms of parenting, he was the one most open to conversation um compared to my mom. My mom was very reserved, mm-hmm. came to herself where or oh, pa pa. Oh, he has days where pa pa thing, yeah. and you see the personality come out, and then he'll will have. I used to talk to my dad as a ten year old, as though we're the same age. Sure, uh, because I didn't. For me, because I never it never registered. But, oh, he's your father. For mm. me, it was hey, you. You are an addition. Mm. You are an addition. You are not here to to change my my life in sure. any way. So we did have conversations. I think even. Before he passed away, I, I would I would still have conversations with him that were on some my dude. You can't tell me you want my mom back. Like your decisions, your decision making skills is the reason she left you. That's how yeah. I talked to him. Yeah, and he'd be like, "Yeah, but I still love her. Ah, but I messed up. Hmm. There's nothing I can do for you. So those, it is what it is. You know. So I'd speak to him like that. Um. And I think as the older I grew, I think when I when I turned nineteen myself, yeah. I remember I had a big moment where I was like, "Oh shucks, this is when my mom had me." And I'm nineteen. I'm in varsity. I'm working and I'm paying my fees myself, and I'm paying rent at this cottage I'm staying in. But I'm a baby. Yeah. How did this woman manage to have me? Sure. And raise me, and then the next year have my brother. You. I think that's when I, 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 I got understanding and, and appreciated her and then started understanding some of the decisions she had made along the way, started understanding even my dad and the decisions he had made. Whether they were right or wrong, I realized it's not for me to judge Yeah, um, because they made the decisions that they made with the resources that were available and the information that was available to them at that time. Um, I can't, it's not for me to judge because even me, I can see now, now that I'm 19, 20, hey, life, ne? it'll show you flame. Yeah. So those are the decisions they made. Cool. I have now been given an opportunity to make decisions for my life as well and myself. And they might, be right decisions and yeah. they might be wrong decisions. Yeah. I have no way of knowing. Yeah. I have no way of knowing until I've made the decision. And same for them. So then you start understanding, you even go into the social political situation in which they, the times that they were they grew up in and the times I was growing up in, two very different yes. times yeah. that provided two very different opportunities. Um I am the child I am. I am the person and the personality that I am because of these two people. So whatever I am, they have it too. Yeah. They just perhaps were not given the same opportunity that I um, ended up being given, you know. So I then ended up understanding and seeing things from their perspective and going, it's okay. Let's see how do we make life better going forward. So... I think the year my dad passed away, they'd already broken up with my mom for years. Um, when you grow up in, 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 in a Hillbrook situation, you something um, there's a certain stability that you will seek 
Mm-hmm. And the stability I thought and needed was to provide a home for my mom. Because as much as this is where I'm growing up, this is not home. Yeah. Um, and so when I started, I had been working since I was 15 at the time. So now in my 20s, the the priority became and to get my mom a house. Yeah. Um, and, and I think I was 23 when I got her a so, house. But it's also those things where... If if I, I was twenty three, then my sister at twenty three, my my younger sister at twenty three, didn't have to make that decision, right? Yeah. So it just it's and then you look it's because of the times we were growing up in and and what was what was available to us. My sister doesn't uh, doesn't need to have to make a decision of I'll take my money and go buy my mom a house. She does she doesn't need to, but I need it to. So it those are the. Those are the joys of being who we are. Yeah. Because I think we also get, I mean, the, the, the resilience is all those things, but there's also, I believe, we are also born a certain way. Sure. Born like that. Yeah. When God brings you on earth, he knows what you need and he knows the, the family that you're being taken into. He knows what they need. Um, and And he makes calculations based on that. Yeah. Are you the firstborn? I'm my mom's firstborn, yeah. Okay. My dad had has a, a, a another daughter mm. three years older than me. Mm. I'm asking because it seems to me like you have like you have a like a savior, you know, um God complex type of thing where you have to be in charge. You you have to get things, you know, okay, like for everybody else. You, like, you need to make your mom's life better. You need to be there for everybody else. But who's there for you? Yeah. I think you... And that's that's why I say you 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 are born the way you are born because of of what people need and you're made the way you are made because of what you'll give to the world, right? Uh, to, to your and the first to then by world I mean family and yeah. friends and then yeah. And I think it wasn't it wasn't organic. It wasn't, or maybe it was, but at the time it's happening. You're not thinking, yeah. Let me try and and save. Uh, yeah, no. At that time, yeah. there's a problem that's here, and you happen to either have been blessed with the solution, um, or you are the one who can find a solution. So it's it just happens in that way, but you also, I think, over the years, I then also had to learn to build that community around me because sometimes the people you help who might not also be the people who who can help you sure. yeah. when you need help. Yeah. And you need to be okay with that. Yeah. Um you need to be okay with the fact that just because I gave you ten rand yeah. today, tomorrow I can't come back to you. Mm. But it means it doesn't uh, remove the fact that I still need somebody to give yeah. me 10 rand. So you then quickly realize or start doing um, an audit mm. of your life and of the people in your life. Yeah. On if, who do I call? Yeah. Because I know who calls me when Bona Beng and Nagul. Yeah. Me, who do I call? Mm. And. Uh, Soon and very quickly, the, the the friends and the family members that are not going to be able to support you in the way you need support, um, you know, people start falling off. Mm. Uh, and you are left with the people who will ride or die with you. You really end up, at the, especially at my age now, 
uh, there's people like, I can be here. I know there's someone I can call if my mom needs anything. Mm. I, I don't physically have to go. And this is not even a family member, but yeah. a friend. Yeah. So they, and they, they do the same. Hey, my mom is a bit of a how fun is it? And they don't do it. You, you build those people. And also, you, I think those people also find themselves. Sure. They, 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 they draw to each other. And then when we're sitting, you realize, how can now we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is my tribe. Oh. Because, I mean, you, you don't hold interviews, actually. Yeah. We just happen to find yeah. ourselves in situations and through conversation or through vibes and feelings. You're like, there's something I like about this. Mm -hmm. What is it? And then it reveals itself. Mm -hmm. So it becomes super important, especially in the industry that I'm in, that and down and sideways and no ways yeah for you to have those people would see I need 20,000 yeah, now now and yeah. you know somebody might not have 20,000 right now but they can call a few people and come yes. back with 10 and exactly. say you must go find another 10 exactly um if you can't have real conversations with the people in your life, what are we doing? Yeah. 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 Oof. And I've actually realized that the older you get, I say that the more allergic you become to fakeness. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and also, I, I'm, I, I happen to be the kind of person, I, I have vibes. Oh. It's just, this just vibes. I'm just yeah. like, mm -hmm. And dizzy pack. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even know why. Yeah. So sure. um, it'll reveal itself if it reveals itself. But you just get to a point where you're like, eh, I'm, I'm not here. Man. Guys, our lives must be, must mean something. Mm. We'll grow old one day if we are lucky. And we'll be able to sit and reminisce and be, and, and look back at our lives. And, yeah. and I'm happy with that decision could have done better here ah oh, that was a wrong 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 decision we will all take stock um so you need to i always say to 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 my people guys we need to live the life we want to live if if you feel like you want to travel tra travel yeah i lost a lot of family members over the years especially in when I was young, I lost a lot of family members um, through many things. And it, 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 when they were still young, a lot of them through the AIDS pandemic. Mm. Um, and so by the time I was 25, I was like, whoa, whoa, hold on. I don't have that many cousins anymore, mm. like immediate cousins that I started out with. Mm. And it's okay. I'm sad that they, they're not here. And then I started having this fear, will I also then be next? Will I make it to 30? Will I make it to 25? Because I started having that conversation in my like 23, 24. Well, I was like, will I make it to 30? And, and, and because my reality was a lot of my family members died before 30. Sure. Beautiful, young, talented individuals just didn't make it. So when I did make it to 30, I was like, whoa, wow. I wish all these people would be here with me now. Um, just to see what life is and see where we would all be and what our relationship would be like, but they're not here. And with them not being here, I knew some of their dreams. I knew the things they wanted to achieve. I know that they would want me to go full steam in the direction of my dreams. So let's honor that. If you so, if I think of something, if I think I want to do something, if I think I want to write a film, yeah. my first film when I was thirty, mm. I will do it. Sure. So Yeah. I just don't want us to live a life full of regrets. Mm. If you want to do a thing, do the thing. Isn't those osangana mulogu hamp? Yeah. Is osangana somehow? Um, but to retreat and go, mm, I haven't figured it all out yet, so I'm not going to make the first step. Yeah. You're not going to make the step. Yeah. At all. At all, guys. You're not going to move. And in fact, what's yeah. going to end up happening is 
you will start resenting and and being jealous of those who have made the first yeah. step. That is a fact. Yeah. You will look at others and be like, Mara, but I'm not going to be Exactly. I'm not going Start now. Yeah. It doesn't. The picture doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it, it'll become more perfect yeah. as you go. And sometimes it might even change all things. Exactly. Yeah. But that which needs to find you will find you, yeah. and it will be what it will be. Oof. But start. Yeah. Start. Oof. I love it. I love it. I want to take it back a little bit. When was the moment when you realized that you needed support and there was nobody around you and you made that decision that, okay, I need to find my tribe. But what was that moment and what was going on? Yeah. <laughs> life was life. <laughs> life was life. Um... I think the, 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 the thought that comes to mind right now is, I think I was mid-20s, mm -hmm. so 24, 25, somewhere there, mm. and I'd lost my job. Mm. Um, I'd been working at that time for almost 10 years. Sure. And self-sustaining, and here I was now without a job for the first time, mm. and I didn't know... I didn't know what, how am I going to survive? Yeah. And I rent and I pay for it, I pay for it, I pay for it, I pay for it. And that resilience, that stubbornness also then kicked in. But more than anything, I was always, I always had God by my side. Mm. Um, I always had 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 God guiding, ordering steps, sure, blessing, sometimes removing things, and you're like, why God, why? Because I remember when I had when I lost that, I was like, why? Yeah, you must hate me, sure. <laughs> and it ended up being the blessing in disguise because had I not left that job at the time that I left it. I doubt I would be doing what I'm doing now, sure, today. Uh, okay, I left acting and and I, I had to survive. Yeah. And I remember, you know, having lost the job and I think a month or two later, being invited for an, int for, for an, for an audition. Yeah. Uh, for another show on SABC1, a presenting show. And I was like, I need this job, Lord. I need, you know how much I need this job, Lord. And I walk in and they'd asked a simple question at the end, like um, qualification. Yeah. And then I wrote BA journalism. Yeah. And when the guys saw it, he was like, oh, you've got a journalism degree. You're right. I'm like, yeah, I write. He was like, oh, okay. Let's do the audition. We do the audition. After the audition, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I don't decide. Yeah. The channel decides. Yeah. Uh, on whether who's going to be their presenter. Yeah. But me, can I please bring you on board to be the script writer? Because I need to be the head script because I don't have one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I need money. I need money <laughs> to pay a bill. <laughs> and it happened to be such a great environment for me at the time because it allowed me, this was the, my first desk job mm. I was not on set every day I was yeah. in a desk writing you know uh, managing a team sure and that's where I, was, I, I had groomed uh, as a as a script writer as a director as a producer mm. because he was like whatever you want to do do it sure. go to him and I'd be like I want to direct like there's a cameraman in this office there's an editor in this office there's camera equipment there's you. You've got ideas. Tell me what you want to go shoot. Sure. Then I'd say, there's all these people and there's a car downstairs. Go. And then I'd be like, but what if it's wrong? It's like, well, I don't know. We'll see when you come. We'll come back with the stuff first. Sure. And that environment of just go do. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wish that on a lot of people because you, you need a space that allows you to go 
test to go yeah. see. Um, it allowed me to 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 see if I wanted to direct, um, and and I did, and I was good at it. Then I did more stuff, uh, and by the time I left that company, I was a full fully fledged script script writer, producer, director, um, and it allowed me then to move on to other jobs, yeah. gain more skills, different genres, different channels. Sure. Uh, so that by the time we started Sorel Media, I didn't know everything, but I knew quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. How amazing. So, and, and, and then there's something God orders. Yes. So those steps. He orders. Yeah. There's times when I've been stressed in life and I'm just like, it doesn't feel like it's going right. And I'd be crying for two months. And then somebody would call. I'm like an unexpected Somebody would be calling me about you. Oh, well, looks like she's a and then we talk about that, and then it'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'm also a Do you know anyone who does such and such?" I'm like me. Oh yeah, I'm an Okay, yeah, come. And then the crying stops. It solves a problem. So God has always ordered my steps. He's always brought me into spaces that, in hindsight, I'm I'm able to learn quite a lot. And I also always go into those spaces to learn. Um. And then and, and to grow in this thing that I set out to be, which yeah. is to be a storyteller and be able to do it in different forms and different mediums mm. um, and in different ways with different people. So he, he uh, he's all, I, I, if I say God hasn't always been there, the story is incomplete without his presence and his wisdom and his grace. Sure. Yeah. Oof. I love that. I love that. I want to get into the fame when you were little, right? Like when you were like 15. Um, how do you navigate fame at that young age? And also, what does fame come with that is not so good and you're 15 years old and you need to maneuver your way around it you know the the concept of fame didn't become a thing mm. until in my 20s but because we because we lived in bubbles um in the community i lived in yeah. there was no one who didn't know me before i even got onto tv mm. i'd stayed there for almost all my life yeah so being humble, but then the the street hawkers, the shop owners, everybody already knew me because I'd grown up. Yeah, uh, Then you get to school. By the time I became, uh, I went on to TV at school. I was, and there was not one child who didn't know me yeah. at school because of I was the girl who would MC things. With MC our I MC our grade eight concert when I when I first got there and then the talent competitions the sure. I, I was that girl so the and no one could say at that time that they didn't know me because in those two communities which I lived in everyone knew me yeah so then that extending to the rest of the country I I couldn't comprehend it. Um, and it would be when we are in Durban, yeah. and then you realize, oh, these people recognize you. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. But it wasn't top of mind because we had so many other things that needed to get done. So, we, we, it was drilled into us that you have to finish school, it should yeah. pass well, and yeah. then you have to get it done. Yeah. If you fail, what mm. taking you off sure. TV? And so it was our priority was school. Pass school, pass done. Oh. Um, and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that there was no social media. Um, because then we also had some semblance of a childhood. We were still able to prank. I remember in, in varsity, my, my group of friends would still, you know, play, uh, get, prank other kids. Yeah. Um, I remember one of the pranks would be at that time, it's hard to believe. There were still phones with no cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 30 through 10. <laughs> and I remember we would be in a group 
and then we'd go to you. Some niggas did it through 10. Yeah. Please take a picture of us and then suppose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd find the white kids being on some, do they know? How do I, there's no care. Yeah, how do I tell them? That like, oh my God. And then we put the police and I was waiting to see your response. So we still had some semblance yeah. of fun. Um, and I mean, even when I got to varsity, everyone who, who interacted with us or who, you know, who went to classes with knew that, oh, those ones on TV. Mm. But it was still a community, uh, a safe community for us that still allowed us to just be. Uh, and yes, there'd be that extra eye on you because people yeah. have recognized you from TV, but nobody, I would say, nobody made us feel uncomfortable, sure. especially the ones they got to know us. They're just like, ah, la ba ba la la. Exactly. They just like all of us, we're all yeah. trying to figure this life out. Yeah. And as a result, some of the vast friends, we're still friends to this day. You find your tribe, you keep them, and mm. you grow together. Yeah, and then you move. Mm. As a young girl, you're already dealing with like an identity crisis, low self-esteem, et cetera, and et cetera. And now you're on TV. So if there are any issues, they will be magnified, mm. right? Mm. Have you ever dealt with something like that? And what, 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 and what was it? Hmm. So I think one of the things that come to mind, I remember when I was, I think I was about 19. Mm-hmm. I was on Kazlam. So my whole life I'd been a skinny girl. Super skinny. Yeah. Excuse me. And I lived in a world that made fun of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lived in a world where there'd be people who'd want to bully me because I'm too skinny or pointed out until I think in, 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 in high school, like towards the end of high school, some girl was like, yeah. They own dealer, man. They own bones. And I was like, it was dudes, man. Mm. And that was the last time they did it. Ooh. I was like, oh, so I can just hit back. Yeah. Then, oh, okay. But it didn't change the fact that that was, I'd, it, well, I had already internalized that issue that I'm too skinny. So fast forward, I get to Gazlam and my character was this young girl who's dating an older g- guy I was dating, mm. Maor, Israel. Mm. And... I'm excited. I'm happy. And then wardrobe department says, here's your outfit. And it's the shortest skirt I have seen so, in my life. And we're shooting in the middle of winter. But I'm just like, let's get. So I'm like, who's is this for? I'm like, no, it's yours. And in my mind, I'm like, yo, my skinny legs on TV. Oh, hell no. And I remember going to the lady and I said, I'm not wearing this. So I'm sorry, but I'm not going to wear this. And obviously she doesn't understand why I'm yeah. saying this for yeah. her. You're an actress. And she's like, you're an actress. Yes. You just wear everything. And I was like, yeah. yes, I understand that. Bit, mm-hmm. But I'm not comfortable in wearing this skirt. And I think she had the presence of mind to understand where I was coming from because she herself had been a skinny girl. Mm-hmm. And she she quickly put two and two together. Yeah. I was like, no, but, you know, tried to make me feel better. But I was just not having it. Mm. I'd, I'd already decided I'm not going to wear it. And then there was a point where she was like, no, you will wear it. And I said, okay, this is all about. Mm. And I went to the director and I said, they want me to wear this. I've done everything. My character was very controversial. She mm. was having sex scenes. She, I was like, I've done everything. And I've been cool with it. Yeah. I'm not cool with wearing this skirt. Mm. And he was like, why? Like, it's too short. I don't feel comfortable. Mm. I was like, okay. Find something else for her to wear. Mm. I was like, how? So we didn't even have to fight. No, I could have just come to this guy sooner. How? Okay, so, okay, okay. And because I didn't want to be in this outfit and be worried about how do I look. Yeah. Instead of giving the performance that I needed to give. Because that also comes with its own stress. Yeah. And that was my issue. Mm. And obviously TV highlights it. Uh, There's still things I'm not able to watch. Because I'm just like, ooh, we just. Yeah. Hey, hey, why did I do that? (laughs) Um, But as a girl growing up, we, we, 
we will always have issues. And, that, and unfortunately, those issues, a lot of the time, don't even originate from you. They originate from other people. Yeah. They'll highlight things about you that you don't like. And I remember telling one of my nieces who's, who's in matric, um, that she, so she ha also had issues about, are oh, they saying this about me at school? They're saying that my friends say I walk funny, my friend. And I said, point out what you see with them. Because mm. sometimes it's just, oh, when there's under nine, ah, when they can't cool. Mm. Just because that's all they're doing. Yeah. They're not creating mm. anything, they're just pointing out what they're looking at. Mm. And how I solved it with the one girl when she was like, oh, you're too skinny. I just said, but when was good. Mm. And that was the last time she mm. said anything about me. Sure. So you, you, you have to, you, you know, you, you eventually find your way. There's no answer. There's no right or wrong answer. You, you find your way uh, around the issues. But you, you, you have to try and not make the issue bigger than what it is. Mm. Um, yeah, try not to make the issue bigger than what it is, but that's also hard because yeah. that's all you are thinking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but, but I think I look, I come from a family that they, they, they love themselves. They love their body types. They love their skin tone. They love their hair. And she's just like, Talks like why? Why are we talking about so, each other's hair? All of us have the same genes, guys. Yeah. All of us have great hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they would just highlight those things, and it's in when you pick up those conversations that, that you then build your confidence around mm -hmm. that. Which oh okay, yes, my hair is nice because my mother's hair is nice. Sure. Just start making that correlation. Yeah. Um. So if whatever you don't like about yourself, try and find the one the other thing mm -hmm. that you do like about yourself, mm -hmm. and work with that. And it's unfortunate that we live in a world like that, especially as women, where there will be things the world tells us is not good enough. Mm. It's not nice enough. It doesn't look like yes, man, man. Yeah. Hey, this is the body I got. Mm. It is what it is. Mm. Mm. Have you healed that inner child that believed that she wasn't beautiful because she was skinny? And where are you now? You honestly, I think I have bigger problems than you can that in that <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think as much as that might have been an issue, I think I had far bigger issues that needed healing uh, than the, the, the being skinny bit. You know, I think I needed to be too... I, I needed to heal from other things like growing up in a house where you don't have and and figuring out when you're older, how do you not go back to that situation again? Um, how do you, and, and as a result, so I think when you grow up without, it becomes very easy to, to give. So it's not necessarily, you mentioned, earlier we mentioned that you become... You want to help save everybody. Yeah. It, it's it's not that you 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 want to. It's that you understand a person's situation far deeper mm. than the next person just because you've been there. Um, so I've had to heal other things um, in a child, and some some of them are stupid. Mm. Some of them are like, wait, I grew up without enough stationer. Like I didn't have stationer. So I remember a few years ago, I went and I bought the color-loving pencil and I was so happy. <laughs> so happy that I had, I could not, and I could bought a coloring book and I could color in. Yeah. And my husband was just like, you are weird. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Yeah. I could only do this at school with other people's things. Now, these are, sure. these are mine. Sure. So there's other things that, yeah. you know, uh, life hits you with other things where, when when you get the chance to heal those things, then you start to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oof. At your peak of your success, what was your lowest moment? Something that kept you awake at night and only spoke to you behind closed doors. What kept me awake? <laughs> 
I, I have I have contention with the question. <laughs> <laughs> because it says peak of success. And yes. I don't know if I've been at a point where personally I feel oh, this is the peak. Yeah. Um yeah. I feel like I I, I it might from out, an outsider looking in feel that oh no but you did this and that was successful and you did this yeah um our lives are so our lives are very different to to each other's right um and i think when you choose to work in this industry and make this industry your main source of income mm-hmm. there's just problems that you deal with that the ordinary accountant and engineer don't deal with. Um, so our success might be deemed as, oh, you were on this TV show, or, oh, no, now you've written a film and you directed the film, and this film is on this platform, yeah. that platform, that's successful. Um, but we are still, we, we might still be dealing with um, the fact that, the fact that we still owe a funder for a film. Mm. So this film might be on some big platform, um, but and 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 that seems and that's deemed as successful by others, but that's not our definition of success. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, yes, it's there. We're still thinking, ah, shucks, we still need more money to pay back the IDC. Mm. And everybody would have moved on from that film, right? Baby Mamas was on, or is on Netflix. Ooh. And I remember when it got onto Netflix, that was our lowest point because it was COVID. Sure. And we were dead broke. Mm. But hey, our film was on Netflix. Yeah. And we still owed IDC. Mm. And so it seems like a huge milestone to the naked eye, but our everyday real life, has other issues. We 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 had set out to pay back the IDC when we started, and and th- that we were we we still hadn't paid them in full, and they weren't stressing us or anything yeah. like that. Um, but we felt like we 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 haven't made enough money to pay back one of our main funders, mm-hmm. and that's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, our business is very complicated. Yeah. It gives the illusion uh, outwardly that you are successful because you are on this platform, you are working with this actor or this director, mm. uh, or you've won this award, or you are, you've been written about on this magazine. Um, but the nuts and bolts of where we find ourselves, uh, Sal and I, is... We run, it's a business for us. Um, so there's a lot more complication when you when you run it as a business um, than when you just come in as a freelancer or actor in your own. We are still stuck with paying back people. We still owe. We are still stuck with promoting the film. We're still stuck with who else did we overlook in terms of paying them? Did we forget to pay somebody? We're a black-owned production company. We then it comes with a lot of negativity sometimes. Sometimes people don't want to work with black-owned yeah. production companies. Ah, oh, but that's so yeah. it's always top of mind for us. We're always making sure we pay people. Uh, and sometimes you have to also go above and beyond just as more to, you know, if, if somebody gets injured on set, yeah, that worries us intrinsically. Like we won't sleep. Um, Sal will drive to hospital uh, to check if you're fine no. while I'm on set trying to still make mm. and finish the day. Sure. And we on the phone, Unja, no, Ushab, Batin, and Napa, you going, cut. It's, it's, it's highly stressful. And I don't know if people, I think we also didn't realize how stressful sure. it is when we went into it. Yeah. Um, it's when you're in it where you're like, yo. I wish this could be easier, but it's mm. not. It's mm. not. Well, besides work, do you ever take moments and you just live in that moment, for example, and you're like, I'm 
35 years old. Oh my God, let me celebrate that moment. Let me, yes, you know, I've got other problems, you know, I've got like other things going on, but let me just celebrate the the fact that I'm 35 and I'm sitting here on a couch Mm. and I'm having a bottle of water. Do you ever have those moments of, of like a celebratory moment where you oh, actually celebrate every, yourself? I think when when I turned 30 was the first time I had a birthday, like a little party thing, dinner thing, because it was a big milestone for me, right? Um, and after and when I turned 30, I was like, wow, why do we only celebrate 30, 35, 40? Yeah. I celebrate every birthday. I even force my friends to celebrate their own birthdays yeah. because it's always that I'm too busy. Ah, it's Wednesday. Ah, hey, hey, let's stop the lorry, stop the lorry. I will come to your house. I'll buy you a moe and be like, Lippy Kaki. Yeah, we are going to sing. We are going to toast. If it's about, if we want to, I love well, for my birthdays. I'm a winter baby in South Africa. So I love being elsewhere where it's warm. Um, so I want to be in Mauritius for my yeah. birthday because then it's warm. Here yeah, it's cool. Mm. I will make that effort um, because our lives are so, they're so busy. They're so busy. And it's very easy to focus on the negative and not celebrate the fact that you are still alive. Yeah. Others didn't wake up. Yeah. They didn't make it to this milestone. Mm. Um, so I'm a huge, I'm a huge uh, ambassador for that. All my people know we will buy a cake. Is it your 37th birthday? Ah, good shot. So it's a reason to celebrate. Yeah. So it's not just about the big mouse again. It's just the fact that we are all here still today. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, absolutely. We celebrate, yo guys, we celebrate. And, and sometimes, and like I said, you know, we would have been in, in on, on on Netflix during COVID, and we didn't celebrate that yeah. because we were just feeling moth. Yeah, you know. And after that, I said, "No, we celebrate every small thing." Yeah. Oh, I'm every. Yeah. Oh, they called and they sent the contract. Has <laughs> bottles, please. Yes. Yeah. Because you yeah. you never know. You never know. Yeah. Um. We, we 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 will go. Sal will come to my house. I'll go to her house with our husbands and our kids, and we'll we'll toast a specific moment. Yeah. Uh, our friends will go to their house. Yeah. You painted your house. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Yeah. Let's celebrate yeah. those moments because not everybody is able to do that. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody is able to do that, and yeah. it's easy to to live in the lull of things and not see the bright side of things. Mm. And then we we says now fifty, and we 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 walked through those moments, and without without giving them proper acknowledgement, mm. you buy a car, we celebrate. No, but it's second hand. It's still your car. We're celebrating. Mm. Mm. So we celebrate mm. everything. I love it. I love it. How important is it for you? And like we spoke about the celebratory part, but like how important is it for you to to make another person feel special, right? And cared for and seen and loved. And I just want to read you something quickly. You said, what to say when your person turns 40? I'm highly honored to have met this trailblazer of a woman. I've known you for over half of our lives. What a journey it's been. We've had ups and downs, good times and bad times but we've been together through it all. As you enter the fourth floor, may you excel beyond measure, reach heights you've never reached before, smile always and love always. I love you and thank you for taking me up on my ideas, for cheering us on, for the adventures we go on and for holding space for me when I needed it the most. You're a superstar, don't ever forget that. Happy birthday, Salamino. How important was that moment for you to not just say, I'm going to celebrate you as my friend, but I'm also going to show you that you're loved, you're seen, you're heard. Mm. I think we live with our, our closest friends, our husbands, our wives, and 
and we sometimes take it for granted. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think with Sal, we get amazed at how long we've known each other and yeah. how much we know about each other. Sure. Um, we, God must have predestined for us to meet in this lifetime mm. and hold each other's hands through it all. Because we, the things we do sound crazy, but we are so scared when we're doing them. Sure. But we do them. Yeah. Um, we've known each other. I met her at crazy. I was 15. Mm. And there was a lot of people we, 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 we've met and known since then. Mm -hmm. And the constant has been us. We've known each other longer than we've even been married to our husbands. Yes. Yeah. So we, we know each other's family. We are, I say one word and Sal already knows what, uh, how to finish yeah. a sentence. Yeah. I, I look up and she already knows what that look specifically sure. means. Yeah. In a meeting, I don't have to say much if I don't want to be there. It's a mannerism that she'll already pick up on that. Oh, she's tapping her, her foot. Mm -hmm. She wants to be out. Um, and then I'll just hear her go, okay, so we need to run to another meeting. And I'm like, we don't need to run to another meeting. Yeah. And then when we get outside, she's like, why did you want to leave? And I'm like, that person, uh, we have it. Mm. So we know each other intimately in, in that regard. Mm. And it's been an honor and a pleasure to be seen by someone in that way and to also be able to see her in that way, to be able to, to be acknowledged in that way, to come with the crazy dream and be like, ah, let's take a, 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 a feeling. Mm. And she's like, Okay, let's see. Are we leaving our jobs for this step? <laughs> yes, we are, friend. <laughs> Why? Okay, let's do it. Yeah. And and it's been an adventure. Sure. It's been every every day for us is an adventure because sure. we yes, we chose a very different industry to what our our family members are in. And then we decided to make it a business and, and business is rough yeah. anyway in the world. But we've learned to celebrate the big and the small one. Yeah. Celebrate each other. Celebrate our kids' birthdays. Celebrate the milestones of our kids. Celebrate our husbands. We celebrate everything because it's so much easier to be, to not celebrate and focus on the negative. And yeah. we've been there. Yeah. We've been there where we focused only on the negative mm -hmm. and it didn't, at a sure. So it's easier because when we go, when it goes bad, it goes really bad. Yeah. And it takes a while to pull us out. Yeah. And because we're creatives, we can't also afford to stay in the in the mm. negative in that negativity. So I'll forever be grateful for, for that girl because she saw me in a way that no one else sure could. And she allowed me to to share my crazy ideas, knowing we live in a world where when you come up with an idea, eh, ting summons yeah. like, like Remy. Yeah. There's water in the taps. So yeah. Who's going to buy it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so it's, I'm mm. very blessed to have sure. been able to get a, a, a girl who I could do this life with. Sure. In that way. Oof. I love that. But when was the last time you cried? Dude, I'm a crier. <laughs> when was the last time? I, I am a crier. When was the last time? Oh, ah, mm -hmm -hmm. I can't remember now. I can't remember. I can't remember because I live with a person who cries every three minutes. I live with a toddler. <laughs> so there's no time for me to cry. <laughs> Just this morning. Yeah. This guy was crying. Yeah. Because when we walked downstairs, I was two steps ahead. Yeah. And he sat down on the stairs and started crying. Wow. But I always walk two steps ahead and hold his hand. Yeah. But today it was a problem. So I have no time to cry. So because I stay with a terrorist who <laughs> doesn't care about my feelings <laughs> and more. Yeah. I'm tired of being 
hit Adimbama, yeah, two year olds, or like when they approach you, they just go, Pah. yeah. You have like, why do you just hit me? Yeah, and for him, he just liked the sound. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, that's well, so cool, mommy. She. <sighs> yeah. So I, yeah, I have not been given the opportunity to cry in recent times. Sure, because I am watching somebody going through their terrible twos. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my life right now. Oof. In the midst of your busy schedule, your work, you're married, you're a mom, everything else, you know, in between, how do you take time for yourself and, and take care of your mental health and your self-care? I think I learned earlier on that my mental health is super important, mm -hmm. but I, in the industry I work in, I can't afford to go see a therapist. Sure. But I soon found the importance of community in, in girlfriends. Yeah. Um, I've realized sure if i spend a night with my girls we all chat about whatever yeah we'll be talking about clouds um but i would wake up the next day and i feel lighter yeah and it's because i feel listened to and i feel heard i feel someone needs me yeah. um i found the community of having just your girls around or a girl around that you can completely be yourself yeah. with whether you're complaining about ibedit mm. or you're complaining about your husband's or yeah. you're complaining about work, just somebody to go, I hear you. Mm. What do you need from me? Do yeah. you need advice? Mm. Oh, okay. So this is the advice. Or yeah. do you just want to mm. vent and that's it? Yeah. Okay, I'm here. I'll, mm. you know, I found that that's given me, it's made me, if I wasn't self-aware, it, it makes me aware of, myself show 360 yeah of the kind of friends i need and the kind of friend i need to be for our show because you're also a different friend to yeah. different people depending on who they are and what they need yeah and you i decided years ago to show up completely mm. for you um i don't have to see you every day and i can maybe see you for 10 minutes in yeah. three months but that 10 minutes yeah will be our best 10 minutes yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm also grateful to have people who think in that way. Just yesterday, I had one of my friends, I was driving past, not even close to her house, but I was in the area, you know, calling her just to check how she's doing, how's the week. She's like, can I can see each other? Let's meet. And we literally met for 10 minutes. It was even less. And she bought coffee. Let me buy you coffee. I'm like, now I'm going to Pilates gallery. Mm. And it was a quick catch up. So. And then... Afterwards, we got on a call and we're like, sure, we needed that. Yeah. So I need people who love like me, who will go above and beyond yeah. in the same way I go above and beyond for them. People who who will give me that safe space um, to vent and cry about this industry that we're in and they are not in the industry. Yeah. But right now they understand it way better than the average person. Yeah. Um, because they've been there through the the, the moments, right? Um, so that helps with my mental health. Sure. It also helps to just wake up and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just be still. Yeah. Just be still. Uh, sometimes it's just about going to do your hair where you're away from everything. Um, and it's just you and your stylist and either you're quiet or you're listening to them or they're listening to you. Yeah. You find different ways that help you maintain a balance um, where your mental health is concerned, where you're not constantly stressing about the one thing. Yeah. Uh, where that opens up another, the, the win a window to another world. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you. It's, you might be going through the most, but give yourself time to listen to it, Dumele. Yeah. You don't know what you'll get from that conversation. Yeah. Mm. You've got two hands and you've got 10 fingers. Are you reaching your full potential? I thrive too. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Alrighty. We are now at the last segment 
of the show where I'm going to ask you your uh, perspective on the various topics. Né? All right. What is your perspective on authenticity? <laughs> hey, the botani deep questions, Moko. <laughs> Uh, my perspective on authenticity is I've taken that with me. Uh, being authentic has been something that's always been top of mind for yeah. me because of the industry I'm in, mm -hmm. right? Even from when I was small, because so many people project onto you who they think you are. Yeah. Um, I've always tried to be as authentic as possible to 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 be ustefina or filwe utete that I am to different people. Um I I have fought to not be conceived in a way that's not true to sure. who I am really. Um and I can't it I, I don't even think it's in conversation. It's just in experiencing a person sometimes people come into the into a room expecting you to be one way yeah and then get shocked when you're another yeah and it's like I, I don't need you to like me yeah I just need you to have a real um, experience of who I am so. and today maybe Jamlile, that's true yeah Sasa maybe Nguadil exactly that's also yeah. who I am the other things of Chica, because you didn't do a certain job correct, that's also who I am. Um, I don't want you to think, because I think there was a time where, where people think, ah, oh, pretty girl, uh, ooh, ah, yeah. so you can just walk all over them. And then it's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I remember even, in, in, I think it was in high school or varsity, where, where somebody said to me, you know, I always thought Okulele, a protean north, and I was like, mm. you're even me, being from Kulela Ko. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> when they got to do me, they were like, yeah. they know not who we thought they yeah. are. And I'm like, I'm not going, I, and I've, I've always refused. I've always refused to conform to what you think mm. I should be or what you think I am. Mm. This is what I am. Mm. Take it or leave it. Yeah. You like it, you don't like it. I feel like me, that. Is yeah. none of my business what yeah. you think about me. So sure. my business is when I go to sleep at night, am I happy yeah. with me? That's that's all I I have to worry about. Yeah. Uh I'm I am not in the business of impressing people. I've never been. Because it takes away from experiencing life. Yeah. Now sing at Twang Amanji. Then Pumalana. Just like, oh, what was I? Luck. <laughs> that was so exhausting. Ooh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I've always been what I am, and I'm grateful that I've also always been surrounded by those who are also authentically yeah. themselves. And if they twang, then they twang with pride, and I love them for that. Yeah. But I'm, I, 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 I don't like this thing of 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 judging people just because they don't. They don't look or sound or act the way you yeah. think they should act. Get to know a person and make yeah. a judgment after. Don't walk into a room already having those expectations. Moba, you will be disappointed. Yeah, that is so true. What is your perspective on validation? Ish. Validation is a rough one because we, as a, a lot of the time, we want, we need to be validated. Yeah, right. Um, and sometimes when you don't get it, it crushes you, it crushes your spirit, it crushes your dreams. Yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes we get validated in ways that are not traditional. And sometimes we don't see it. We miss it because we're looking for it in a specific way. Sure. And I was saying this to say, it reminds me when I was young, uh, one of my favorite uncles, Malum Mad. Yeah. Chris was his other name. Malum Chris. There would be a thing every time he would walk into the house, if I haven't seen him for a couple of days. And Kyle, all of us had nicknames. But one of the nicknames he had for me, he'd walk in and be like, ah, what is this? 
and the mistress would be me. And in his mind, I was a smart girl. And I was five or something stupid like that. But I was a mistress. A mistress is a teacher and she is smart. She teaches other kids. She, you know, there's a certain, it comes with a certain way that you need to be. And it validated me at the time. And I didn't realize, obviously, that it was validation. But the one thing I knew when I would be stuck would be, I'm smart. Sure. I'm smart. I'd find myself in dodgy situations and dodgy places. And and I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before I'm anything else, I'm a smart girl. Sure. Malumati said, let's get out of this. And that validation... I've, I'll never forget it because I, I didn't need anyone else. Yeah. Anyone else who came, who validated me was a bonus. It was, thank you. But that guy yeah. already told me all I needed to know about myself. Sure. And I didn't know it. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it doesn't come in the way we need it to come. It's not packaged nicely. Yeah. Um, so peel your eyes. You, you might have already been validated. Yeah. You just didn't realize it as that. Sure. Oof, I love that. What is your perspective on resilience? One sentence. I can't give it to you in a sentence. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> line. And I'll quote something I said. And uh, so a few a few weeks ago, I got invited by my old high school. Yeah. To come give a speech to the matrix who were leaving. Um, and I, I and I, I I gave them the speech right. And one of the things I spoke on, yeah, I said, the world will define you. They will give their definition of who you are. Mm. One of the things that they'll say is that you're stubborn. Mm. Um, but you have to correct them, sure, because the correct words that they're looking for is that you're resilient. Oof. Um. So where resilience is concerned, yeah, that's what I'll say. Oof. What is your perspective on purpose? Oh, oh, what are we even doing if we have no purpose? Yeah. Why are we even here? Yeah. Purpose is one of the first things that I latched onto when I was young, going, Why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? And when you ask the questions, the answers will come. Yeah. And it's been it's always led me. It's always Ihamba Pamikwa. Yeah. Because it almost decides almost every decision why are we doing this what's what we're telling this story next why are we telling it we're telling baby mamas why are we telling baby mamas in this way what are we trying to say about our community what are we saying about women we're telling love sex and 30 candles it's a story about turning 30 why why who is it important to um so never mind telling stories what are you doing stefina zwane kuneval uh, as a storyteller, what kind of story? Well, for you to even get to a point where you're telling stories, mm. what questions did you need to ask? Sure. There is nothing I am more sure of in this world um, as my purpose. My purpose is to tell stories. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, not everybody might like those stories. Not about everybody. It's about am I fulfilling yeah. my purpose? Yeah. yeah. It's to share a story. And whether that story is through film, whether that story is to sit in front with you and have a conversation, whether that story is writing. Yeah. Um, I'm the storyteller. I was born to, t- to do mm-hmm. this. Um, but I had to go on that search to find out so, what, why am I here? What's mm-hmm. my purpose? Mm. And then one last one. What's your perspective on spirituality? Sure. I like that. I'm so grateful that I grew up in a country that accepts different kinds of spirituality, mm-hmm. right, or religion. Yeah. Um, because I think it is such a personal mm-hmm. thing. I, I find it odd when somebody has the audacity to say, you don't serve the right God. Yeah. I'm like, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, with, you know, there's people who think it's so, pres- who make it so prescriptive and it's not. What God requires from me is not the same thing he requires from you. Yeah. Yay. So I find it, I find it weird that people think 
we can talk so candidly about each other's spirituality so much so that you think you have a say. Yeah, it's what I focus on your own. Mm. Focus on what the spirit says mm. about you and what you need to hear yeah. and what you need to do. Uh, and if you've been gifted enough to also be told about other people, mm. great, but handle that with care. Sure. But it is, it is, a, it is such a personal journey that it's none of anyone's business. Yeah. To buy new ukonza p ukonza ni. Yeah, I um, mm, focus on you. Yeah. Let's use it, guys. We need to get back to mind your own business. Mind your own beeswax is what mind we your own beeswax. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's just things we just need yeah. to go back to basics. Yeah. Where we're like, hey, 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 Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I mean, we have so much happening in the world right now, starting from spirituality. And that's why it needs to be a personal thing. Yeah. It's, it sure. has to be. I love that. Please grab that mirror over there. Mm -hmm. Steph, when I started seeing my greatness and my beauty, I had to stop looking at myself and I had to start seeing me. What do you see when you look into that mirror? When I look into the mirror, I see a very strong girl. I see a girl who's gone through and and overcome things that a lot of people might not even know about, but she's overcome them. Um, I see a girl who who's a dreamer, definitely a visionary. Yeah, that's what I see. I love that. Steph, this camera or this camera or this camera, mm -hmm. tell the people what you have going on what they can look out for and on which platforms? I don't know. What do I have? Well, um, what is happening in my life? Baby Mamas. Oh, yes. Thank you. Love, <laughs> Sex and 30 you, Candles. So you can watch Baby Mamas on Netflix. You can watch Love, Sex and 30 Candles. You can watch Homebreaker on Netflix. So three films on Netflix worldwide. Um, yeah, please, please. Yeah. And also, I think this is also a time to say thank you to everyone who's already watched all of, all of those films. They, they did really well on the platforms. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah. And yeah, right now we hoping for Baby Mamas too. Nice. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well done, man. Thank you. Well done. Steph. The candle tried to burn me. It also tried to ruin me. But that very same candle lives within me and that candle is shining bright. Boom. And I'd like to say to you right now, keep shining. Thank you. Keep shining. Yeah. Uh, like that. I like the candle reference. <laughs> and because the candle, or well, I was Tati Kendra in the Yeah, like, exactly. doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And from me, Mrs. Itumeneng Sikubedi, keep your perspective alive. <laughs> oh, so beautiful.